Um, so just staying on the power issue, how big of a threat uh, is the storm going to be to nuclear power on the East Coast? So these nuclear power plants are built to withstand Category 5 hurricanes. So this is something where they might have to shut down because of the amount of flooding, because it may be safer on workers to move to and from the plants. And those shutdowns are things that our electric grid should be able to handle. Um, we're actually approaching the fall nuclear maintenance season anyways, where a lot of these plants will shut down uh, for just seasonal maintenance. And you see natural gas burn tick up. Uh, to really replace this demand. So it's something that you will see some plants shut down that are right in the path of this storm, but you're also seeing a lot less power demand anyways. There are a lot of evacuations, power lines will get knocked down from the winds, uh, and just the amount of rain and slightly cooler air decreases cooling loads overall. So you're not expecting a major impact from these nuclear <coughs> outages. Well, fair point. Uh, how does it overall, though, compare to, say, the five-year average? Like, walk us a step back and tell us where we are. So it's... A lot depends on the exact path of the storm, the amount of flooding, which plants kind of shut down. This is something where we should see nuclear outages tick up above the five-year average. How much? We kind of have to wait and see how the storm plays out. But again, we could run at the five-year maximum, and we still have the natural gas burn capacity in the region, especially when combined with any decreased power demand from this storm, to really make it not too significant of a deal. And you can really see that here, David. Right. That white line is where we are right now in terms of plant outages, and uh, the the red line is the five years, so we're sort of right in line. Well, and my question is, if you shut a nuclear plant down, how long does it take to get it back up and how expensive is that? I mean, it's not something where these plants are used to these kinds of shutdowns. And but is it a day, a week, a month? It's, it's a relatively short amount of time, yes. It's, it's something where there's flexibility. I've even heard that some of these plants are on two-hour cycles. Like every two hours, they'll, they'll check the, how the maintenance is, uh, how everything's up and running. If they, the forecast changes, they're kind of ready to go. But these plants are prepared for this. Um, after Fukushima, the, uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Council did a very in-depth review of all of our plants to make sure they're up to standard. And what about the cost? Is that just automatically passed on? to ratepayers? Uh, yes. So the, the costs are something where they're, as I said, these plants often shut down multiple times a year already. It's not like this is um, something that's new or something they're not prepared for. So there is a small cost, but that is passed on. And these, and it really has no, no significant downstream mm -hmm. effect on power prices for the region. So to staying on, on power, though, natural gas, there's a lot of natural gas plants uh, in the area as well, plus two pipelines uh, that take supplies up uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the northeast coast. Uh, walk me through that and sort of the power burn. So recently we saw natural gas power burn actually tighten dramatically on a weather adjusted basis over the past week. Uh, many were surprised to see natural gas prices bounce this week ahead of a hurricane that's expected to really destroy demand. This appeared to occur independent of the hurricane. Mm -hmm. We just saw the market tighten, prices are firmer as a result. We're now waiting to see that demand fall back off. As this hurricane moves on shore, you have a trifecta of evacuations lowering power demand in some regions, as well as cooler weather and rain decreasing demand for cooling demand, and finally seeing just widespread power outages. This is a very strong storm with a large swath of wind. So you should see demand for natural gas fall off in line with those natural gas plants potentially coming offline as they need to shut down as well. Those are are also some of our most flexible plants. So they're able to shut off and come back on if needed, mm -hmm. especially as the storm moves on through the region.